Hello, I'm Megan Brady Nelson. I'm assistant professor and program director of fine arts and also art education coordinator at Belmont University. My paintings that are on display in the Lou Art Gallery are a selection from my most recent work, Color Tribulations, a mothering art academic in a pandemic. Everything I'm about to show and tell you is best documented in my recent publication in the Journal of the Motherhood Initiative that was published in December. In order to stay on track and honor all our time, I'm going to read a selection from that. Using personal narrative as a feminist approach to producing knowledge, I describe how living in a pandemic creates the ultimate experience to conduct art space research on gender inequality for artists, educators, and professionals, as well as the effects of the process art making can have on grief, depression, and anxiety. My maternal grandmother, Ann Palmera Serrato, my nanny, was the youngest of four children and the second to be born in America. Her parents and two older siblings were all born in Northern Italy. As a family, they immigrated to San Francisco and settled in North Beach. This five block radius was Nani's home for 95 years until July, 2019, when she moved in with my parents, seven minutes away from my home in Franklin, Tennessee. Over the next six months, Nani and my two young daughters, ages six and three, would spend their afternoons together. This happened organically as the same week I was interviewing for some after school help, I was also interviewing for a caregiver for Nani. One candidate was qualified for both. And although to, it was a bit chaotic to arrive home to, fall 2019 provided many cherished memories of four generations spending their days together. Winter 2020 was an extremely hard time for my family. In late December, 2019, Nani fell ill and on Christmas Eve, we brought her home to hospice at my parents' house. To hospice a loved one at home is a privilege that is emotionally and physically draining. On the first day of spring semester classes last year, I got that dreaded call from my mom. I could hear in her voice that we had lost a family member, but I was shocked to hear that it was not Nani. We had lost my uncle, Daniel J. Ward, to a heart attack in the middle of the night. Daniel was my godfather and my mother's younger brother by 10 years. A renowned DJ in Hawaii, he was full of life, love, and happiness. He was one of my mother's closest friends and a loving ray of light in my life as well. To suddenly lose him as we were slowly losing his mother was devastating on my family, especially my mother and I. This painting, A Dance for Daniel, is one of the works currently on display here. When Nani peacefully passed on January 28th, I, lost, I felt a loss I had never felt before. My Italian grandmother was an extremely smart and sassy woman who taught me more about life than I'll ever learn from another person. She taught me how to be strong yet kind. She taught me how to be honest, direct, and empathetic. She taught me how to do one thing a day well and how to look at life with happiness and humor. Nani was there for every big moment in my life and it was she I would go to when I needed advice. This painting, A Dance for Nani, is one of the works currently on display in the Lou Art Gallery. In late February 2020, we celebrated the lives of Ann Palmer Serrato Ward and Daniel J. Ward in San Francisco, California, with a beautiful family event at the Italian Cub in North Beach. The last time our whole family had gathered together in one spot was over 17 years ago at my wedding. Gathering together to share stories of their lives was an event of love for two amazing people. We laid their ashes together in the water of the San Francisco Bay as a source of strength and healing for the family still standing on the shore. Excuse me. In early March 2020, I returned home to Franklin, Tennessee with my husband and our two daughters. By this time, the reach of COVID-19 was growing and Belmont and the public school system shut down soon after we returned. When my mother and father returned from San Francisco a week later, COVID-19 had reached our community and we felt it best not to see them for their own protection. As the days of the stay safer at home order went on and on and the orders of social distancing caused my personal grief to deepen, I grew depressed as my family could not grieve together due to the pandemic. As a mothering epidemic, I needed to find a way to be an, an empowered mother in order to gain strength and to start to heal for myself, my family, and my students. I needed to create space for situations that would empower myself to embody my identity as an artist. I needed to start painting. Using flowers sent as a thoughtful condolence, I set up a still life painting lesson. It was through this process of teaching my daughters how to use art making to memorialize something beautiful shared with our family in remembrance of loved ones that I started to create again. Watching their creative energy flow encouraged me to step into the art making process. Playing with their art making materials inspired me to play further on a canvas in my home studio. 
This work completed from this process of instruction and play is called Love. This painting, Love, was my first in 2020 and is currently on display in the Lou Art Gallery. After teaching my college level courses online and attempting to teach my daughter's curriculum, we continued to play with our art making and our shared making space. When I would paint, they would paint. We also collaboratively painted. It was these shared moments that became spaces where we helped one another to work through the tantrums and the stress that come with living, learning, and working from home full-time together. We call these works meditative tantrums as there were many, many, many <laughs> over this time period. I continued to use the kitchen table to instruct my daughters in unique ways of making art, such as playing with printmaking. Together we enjoyed making art, but each day this would only last an hour or so. And then they wanted to play outside. Since the table was already set up, I started to paint there so I could keep an eye on them through the kitchen table window. As the weather in our area continued to grow into beautiful spring, I started to paint on our back deck. This way I could keep painting while also keeping an eye on the kids. I absolutely love the process of painting outside, but not the process of having to break it down each night. In a matter of a week, I had moved my studio from upstairs in the playroom to the kitchen table and then the back table, allowing me to paint each afternoon. I wanted to sustain this practice in a way that would not require me to move it, to move my setup each time the family gathered for a meal. Therefore, I moved my studio into the driveway. I thought this would be a great space and it worked for a while until the girls started to think of this space as their personal playground, perfect for hide and seek and soccer. Working in the driveway worked for a few days, but I tired to have, of having to take it in each night um, and the tree above kept dropping bugs all over my work. Therefore, I moved my car into the driveway and created a sanctuary to paint in while continuing to watch my children run around, catch insects and escape the snakes. With this setup, I started painting and painting and painting. The paintings, around 100 by the end of April, conceptually work through the multitude of stresses and anxieties that accompany mothering and teaching in the midst of a pandemic and transform them into meditation, color, and forms of art therapy. It was through this process of painting and playing with colors every day that my fog of ever-consuming grief, depression, and anxiety started to lift. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused tribulations across the world, but the one thing it has provided me, which I had not had since becoming a mothering art endemic, is extended time to play with art making. With my new garage studio, I was not concerned with damaging the floors or making a mess of our family table. This new art making space provided me the freedom to experiment, experiment with color therapy. Color therapy defined as the use of color and colored lights to improve or enhance physical or emotional well-being. Using different media and containers, I mixed my color concoctions as if they were elixirs of happiness. I find healing qualities in my color potions and strength and peace as I lay the colors on the canvas one at a time. Many artists are taught and continue to create with a limited palette. As I was experiencing a range of emotions, I chose to use the whole spectrum of a rainbow to express what words could not in my works. I looked to color as a source of healing. Payne's gray is my color of grief and sorrow and rep represents the memories of my loved ones, almost like a fading dream. The farther away they are, the paler and bluer they appear. I use a spectrum of pinks, magenta, violet, crimson, and fluorescent pink, a lighter shade of red, pink holds power in its hue. Looking at a shade of pink brings me happiness and wearing it makes me feel strong. I find power in strong, vibrant pinks as I do not ascribe to the feminist backlash against the color. I played with orange for its shock, yellow and ochre for its warmth, and many hues, shades, and tints of blue and green for their connections to water and the earth. Large strokes of cleansing white with its link to light and spirituality. Working through this creative process of building colors upon colors, as well as the sheer multitude of paintings has provided me a space for healing and a space where I can truly embody my mothering art academic identity. I continue to collaborate, to collaboratively paint with each of my daughters. This process of making together has provided them a space to collaboratively engage with color therapy and together we have produced works we are proud of. Grief has no conclusion. And as I write this, the conclusion to COVID-19 is still on the horizon. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed the inequalities of gender equality in our current society like no other time in history, with the highest numbers of females leaving the workforce since we have joined it. 
COVID-19 has also exasperated mental health conditions in America and further exposed our inequalities. I continue to mother and teach and paint while living in a pandemic. My depression is lifted, but my grief and my anxiety, they still hang on in our current social climate. As I pass through my mothering making space each day, I am not currently able to play with color for hours, though I continue to find short bursts of time to experience color therapy. This process of painting continues to bring me a sense of safety and calm in the middle of COVID-19 chaos. There are many stories from this year, stories of pain and loss, but also of hope and healing. After a long year of social isolation, it is my hope that by sharing my story, you are inspired to find ways to create every single day for yourself, no matter the material, the media, the size of the reach, that you make space to use your creative skills every single day. Finally, I would like to thank our gallery director, Katie Mitchell, for her creative efforts in constructing the show. What you see here is an arrangement of my color tribulations created by Katie. This, this creation by Katie, has allowed me to look at my work through a fresh perspective. So thank you. Thank you, Katie, and thank you all for being here. Take care. <laughs>